Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of The Ultimate Iron Man. We just finished 79 days of Chambers of Zarek, and this is my first time seeing the outside world in months. Okay, not really, but it feels like we're starting a whole new chapter on the account, like a whole new adventure is about to begin now that we're done with raids. I guess we could call this next chapter like the using up raid supplies saga or something like that, because um, there's a lot of supplies that we got from raids, as you can see in the looting bag. It's going to take a long time to use everything up. I don't know exactly how long. Could be a month, could be a couple months, could be even longer, but... The next like big thing we have to do is giant mole, but to do giant mole we have to clear out some items first. I guess most notably the planks and the ores, because right now if I were to take everything out of his spory, it would completely fill up my looting bag and completely fill up my inventory. And here's all the stuff that we currently have in his spory as well, so you can see this is clearly a lot of items. Before raids started, my bag was already overflowing because I had just gotten a couple of new items. I just got the ferocious gloves and the brimstone ring. And now after raids, I still have like all these new raids items on top of everything. So I will end up dropping uh, at least a couple of these items before we start doing giant mole and all this other stuff. For now, it's just going to sit in his spore and look pretty for the next few days. Um, but I guess actually we can alk a couple of these items here. Like uh, we don't need the Nezzy anymore and we don't need the Black Deep High Chaps anymore. Oh, I finished two ancestral sets, by the way. So go ahead and put this set in the POH and you saw the other pieces were in his spory. I do already have one of these pieces in here. Oh yeah, I guess we're done with the rune pick as well. Okay, I have to go die to his spory now. And I kind of realized I'm also going to have to drop these dragon arrows because I never end up getting a Tebow. Tebow, more like today's sponsor is... Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for any topic that might interest you. There's classes for any skill level, whether you're just starting out or if you want to improve on a skill you've been practicing for years. You know, there's always new things to learn. Let's say, for example, you want to learn how to stream. You can search up streaming or search for your own specific software, like what I use, which is OBS. From there, you can find the class for you, whether you're a beginner or if you'd rather take a look at the more advanced guides. And if you're busy, you can always save the class and continue watching later. Whatever legal things you might be interested in, I'm sure you can find on Skillshare. They've really got classes for everything, whether it's like any kind of music or art or writing, photography, animation, web design, like legit, there's so much stuff. There's bound to be something that interests you, even if you haven't already found your passion. There's no ads on Skillshare, and the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, so that way you can try it out and see if it's for you. So go out there and find the things that you never knew that you want to find out about. And thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, watch right here. I'm going to take everything out of here. And uh, this is uh, <laughs> what it looks like. Clearly, this would not be the ideal inventory for doing mole, so we gotta free up a bunch of space. All right, oh wow, that's crazy, almost a bill worth. Okay, uh, the first thing that we're gonna be clearing out of the looting bag is the herbs, kind of at least. Uh, before raids, I had, I think it was four or five stacks of clean herbs that I had just always been keeping on me, which was these five right here. So obviously now that I did raids, I have all the grimy versions of those herbs. I never cleaned any of the herbs while I was doing raids because it would just take too long. Like all my friends already wait for me to bag my items up and to cook my food. So if I also had to clean like 200 herbs between every raid with like 10 open inventory spots, that would take a very long time. So I left them all grimy and now is the time that we're going to be cleaning them. And this way, once we clean these, we'll uh, consolidate five stacks of items. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter which one we start with, so I'll just pick a random one. I'm going to reset the herb lore XP because um, I was keeping track of all the herb lore XP we gained from raids, just from the dark relics and making potions in the raids, which ended up being like 1.3 million XP, but we're going to reset this now, and um, I guess we'll just see how much XP we get from cleaning all the herbs, and then later on, once we actually make the potions, I guess we just add that XP on as well and see how much total XP we end up gaining from raids, and it's going to end up being a lot of XP, I'll tell you that right now. Um, I could go to Narda, by the way, and you can pay him 200 GP per herb to clean your herbs for you. But why would you pay money to lose herb lore XP? That makes no sense. Uh, one more other thing I want to mention is that with the Arceus rework coming out, it's being beta tested right now, uh, but there's a spell in there called Degrime, which does automatically clean all the herbs in your inventory but you get half the XP, and why would you want to get less herb lore XP on Ultimate Iron Man? Doesn't make sense. Um, I'll show you how we'll be cleaning these. This is the best place in the game for UIMs to clean herbs because you unnote them on the banker right here, and then on a tool leprechaun, you can note anything that you farm, and you could farm herbs, so then we get the stack of the clean herbs right there, and then we just go back and forth, unnoting these, cleaning all them, and then noting them on the tool leprechaun. And uh, this is going to take a very long time. I think if you do this at max efficiency, it's like 5,000 herbs per hour, I think is what the wiki said. 
Um, but for me, I'd probably get way less. In fact, I think I'm going to end up AFKing a lot of this. Uh, they made this update like a year ago or something where if you just start cleaning them, it does slowly clean all of them. Obviously, it's faster to just manually clean all of them, but I have nothing better else to AFK while I edit videos and stuff, so I may as well just sit here and let them clean themselves. I don't know if any of you took like a really good close look at all those herbs that I had, but there were like, I think it was 30,000 or something grimy herbs. If I'm averaging like two or three K per hour, this is going to take a long time, but I'd still rather get the extra herbal XP. Well, I'll, I guess I'll see how I'm feeling in a few hours, but I'm just gonna start AFKing and editing and eating dinner and all that good stuff and ponder my life's decisions that led me to this point. I've never actually bought a looting bag from LMS, but that is an option for one point. You are able to buy a looting bag. So you can see I have 46 points here. I was kind of doing a little bit of LMS here and there. I don't really enjoy it, but it would be cool to eventually like get this stuff that's storable in the POH. You could store the outfit, you could store the swift blade. You know, I just like filling up stuff in the POH, but this will be a very rare occasion that I'm actually going to buy a looting bag from LMS because I don't feel like gearing up to do any combat stuff. And this way, as I get each of the herbs clean, I can just dump them into the looting bag and not have to worry about a bunch of noted herbs in my inventory as I'm trying to clean more. All right, I'm going to call it the end of day one of cleaning herbs here. It's been five hours according to this XP tracker. So we'll add that onto tomorrow and we'll see in total how long it's going to take to clean all these herbs. While I've been cleaning the herbs, I put together this little flow chart, not just to give you an idea of what's coming up, but also for me, because personally, it really helps me to organize my thoughts when I think about how to explain things to a five-year-old, uh, I, I mean to YouTube viewers. I separated my plan into four main sections. The first being condensing the inventory like we're doing right now, uh, which is cleaning the herbs and using up the skilling supplies from raids like the planks and the ores. And that way we'll have a slightly more empty inventory for giant mole, which is going to be what's next. I'm probably going to have to do like two to three K mole to get enough bird's nest to match my toad flax to make cerebrum. And then after opening all the nests for mole, I should have a massive amount of seeds to plant, which does include herb seeds, which means the stacks of herbs will be getting even higher as time goes on, and that's the reason why I'm waiting until the end to make the potions, because I just want to make them all at once. But while I'm planting all these seeds and collecting secondaries like limpert roots and white berries, I'll be doing agility in between all those runs to build up amylase for the stamina potions. And then once all the secondaries are collected, we can finally start making all the potions. Although some secondaries I have to collect as I go, like for the dragon scale dust or the mortmire fungus. And in between all of that, I also have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that I want to fit in there, like getting the farmer's outfit, getting the master wand, I still have to do the new quest, and there's probably other stuff I can't think of too, but stuff like that. By the way, none of this has to be locked in, but I just want to give a general idea of what my plan is because this is the whole reason why I play UYM and why I love it so much. I really love this planning process and coming up with the right order to do things, and that's really one of the main points of this series, and it's such a satisfying feeling to like manifest the concepts that you come up with into reality. Which basically means that I come up with ideas to make numbers go up in my head, and then I actually make numbers go up in game, and it feels good. All right, this is the last of all the grimy herbs. According to the XP tracker, it looks like we spent another over eight hours today just cleaning herbs. So I guess in total, that means between today and yesterday, I spent 13 hours cleaning herbs. It was worth it, okay? Shut up. See, look at all that XP we gained. Almost 500k XP gained just from cleaning the herbs. That's a freaking, okay, that's a high amount for a UYM. For a normie account, like, that's really not much. That'd be like two hours of training herb lore, but for a UYM, dude, that's a lot. Uh, you can see in his spory, no more herbs. And then if you take a look at the looting bag, this is the total amount of herbs that we have now. So combined with the clean ones we had from before, I did the math, I think this is right. I have about 65,000 herbs in total. And by cleaning these herbs myself, I saved like, I guess at least 6 million GP. Now that all the herbs are cleaned, we just freed up like five bag slots. And the next order of business is to use up the ores. I am so sorry, not really. Uh, the first ore I want to use up is the Addy ore. And I was trying to think for a while what I should make out of these Addy bars. And I was kind of going back and forth between either Addy plates or just committing to a stack of Addy darts. But I was thinking about where I use darts the most. And it used to be Serb. I used so many darts there. But they recently made Serb into a demon. So now I'm just going to use Arclight. So I should be able to maintain my Addy darts while doing Slayer just through like grotesque guardians tasks. So what I'm going to do is make enough Addy darts just to fill up the blowpipe. I have to take the blowpipe out because I have no idea how many darts are in here. Oh, that's actually a lot. I guess I'll just be making 3k Addy darts and then the rest I'll be making into plate bodies. When I was in between raids doing Blast Furnace, I never bothered to get the ice gloves, 
but this is a bit different because I'm gonna be there for a lot longer. So I figure this time around, I may as well get the ice gloves because this time I'll probably be spending like two full days at Blast Furnace. This is so weird. I don't think I've ever gotten the ice gloves without all these guys being aggressive to me because I've always just done it at a low level on this account and like all the other accounts. Uh, you can ignore all the Addy darts on the ground, but there is the ice gloves. This makes it so I don't have to use a bucket of water every single rotation or wait for someone else to use a bucket of water. And in order to save inventory space, I'm gonna keep the ice gloves equipped and then also keep the construction cape equipped. I'll put these two pieces back in the POH. I don't think runs really gonna matter too much there, especially once I start bringing the staminas when I go for like the plate bodies or the gold ores. Ooh, I gotta remember to reset the smithing XP as well. So we'll set the tracker to the current XP and then we'll see how much smithing XP we gain from all these ore just from raids. The whole time I was doing raids, I never did any AFK woodcutting slash fire making in my downtime. It was mainly mining for my AFK thing, but I miss woodcutting so I'm gonna go back to it for today. Okay, and we are off to the blast furnace. I'm gonna show you for like the millionth time, for those of you that haven't seen, how to work the blast furnace without having to use GP. So right now you can see we're not on the blast furnace world. I'm gonna put all my ores onto the conveyor belt now. And then once we have all of our ores on here, you have to make sure you have one of like an extra ore in here. Otherwise it doesn't work for some reason. But you can see I had no money on me. I have no money in the coffer here. And we're gonna hop to a blast furnace world. And once we hop, you can see there's the XP drop. And when we go over to the bar dispensary, we have the ice gloves on, don't have to wait, and we can grab the Addy bars out, hop back to the non-blast furnace world, smith these bars into darts, and repeat the process. I'm only gonna have to do this for one hour because I only need like 3k darts, so it should take about an hour, and then after that, we'll move on to the plate bodies. And here are the darts, done, and a pretty much full blowpipe. And then moving on to the plate bodies now, I have to grab the runes out of his spory so I can elk the plate bodies. And then probably staminas as well. There's not as much time standing still because it's a lot faster to make an inventory of plate bodies than it is with the darts. But with this setup, I have 20 open inventory spaces, so I'll be able to do four plate bodies per inventory. Just have to buy a few more runes here for alking and then we'll be all good to go. I didn't do the math to see how much money we're gonna make. I'm just gonna leave it a surprise. I'll just put all the money from the inventory into the money bag and it'll be very easy to keep track that way. Yeah doing this is much faster paced than just making a dart so I'm glad I brought the staminas. Uh, one trick I want to show by the way for any UIMs doing this method is that I unfilter my game messages so that way I don't forget how many ores I put onto the conveyor belt. I just know that when I see four messages here I'm done. There's probably a runelight plugin to help with that but that's just how I keep track. It's so late and I keep almost making darts just out of muscle memory because like every time I smith it's always just to make darts. I'm trying to like train myself, like force myself into making the plate bodies instead. Oh no, I just noticed something that I can't unsee. It says plate body, but it's plate body. God, it's so late right now. Hey, we just hit 440 million total XP. And I'm not like 500k XP late for once. All right, and this is gonna be the last batch of Addy bars that we're gonna be making. You can see there's no more noted Addy bars in the inventory. And it looks like from all the Addy ores, uh, we ended up getting about 350k smithing XP. Originally, I wanted to do the Runite bars next, but it's getting kind of late in the day. I want to do all the gold ores all in one session. So I think I'm actually gonna go grab everything off his spory and then redo the looting bag because I want my inventory to be as empty as possible for the gold. Oh yeah, and uh, the total GP that we made from all those Addy plate bodies ended up being over 6 million GP, almost 6.5 mil, which is going straight into Ferox. And now with the Addy ore all gone, that is another free spot in the bag. I guess I haven't done the family pest mini quest. I was just trying to get the goldsmith gauntlets. Um, should I just complete it? I think I just have to talk to these guys, right? Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just do the mini quest right now. I mean, you don't have to do the mini quest to get the gauntlets, but I may as well, right? I want to get it done eventually, so. That was really fast. All I had to do was just speak to each of the three brothers, and that's it. And I have to pay 500k as well. Um, I don't know if I have enough GP, actually. I am pretty poor. Pay the 500k GP, and that is the family pest mini quest complete. And with this mini quest done, we're now able to own all three of the different kinds of gauntlets simultaneously, which doesn't really make sense on a UIM. But I can also now claim the gauntlets free of charge. I don't have to pay 25k each time I want to change it. This guy's also got a pretty nice looking cape too. I might try to get that one day. Okay, Avon, hand them over. Yes, goldsmith gauntlets, cool. Like I said, I want as much inventory space as possible. I could just have the construction cape equipped but I don't need it the whole time I'm there, so I'd rather just have the Graceful Cape, which doesn't really matter because I have Staminas anyways, but I just feel like having the Graceful Cape, I guess. The reason why I mentioned before I want to do all the gold ore in one session is because I want to go for a six hour record. The top six hour record for UIM for smithing is 1.8 million XP, but I just did the math with all the gold ores I have, that's only gonna get me like 1.5 or 1.6 million XP, so 
at very best, I could get rank two. And to be fair, I don't even know if I'd be able to play efficiently enough for six hours straight to even get that much XP, even if I had all the gold ore. So for me, I don't think it'd matter anyways, but we'll see if we can get rank two, which would pretty much be me using up all this gold ore in a six hour period. A couple things I'll be doing for Blast Furnace to make it easier on me personally is first off, when I do Blast Furnace, I like to go into Resizable. And then there's also this plugin that I found recently, which is actually pretty convenient. It's called Custom Left Click Drop. So instead of having to hold down Shift to drop items, you can set whatever items you want onto this list here. And when you click on them, when you just regularly left click them without holding down shift, it'll drop to the ground, which I know sounds really overpowered, but that's just a basic function you could do on any Windows computer by using the sticky keys feature. This just makes it more convenient because you could just do it within RuneLite itself. I've never actually tried this plugin before. I, I just found it last night. So turn that on. I did have some gold bars in here from before, so we'll take those out. I'm not holding down shift right now and the left click option is draw. That's really cool. If you're not on RuneLite though, you can just press your shift key five times in a row and that way you can turn on sticky keys. All right, I think we're pretty much all set up now. So I'm gonna log off to reset the six hour timer and we'll see how far we can get in six hours, see if we can use up all the gold ore. Oh boy, we've got a smithen level coming in. That's level 94. Okay, no time to waste. By the way, the reason why you can't see anyone here is because I turned on the Entity Hider plugin. Just makes it a bit easier for me. All right, there's the four hour warning going pretty strong so far. I haven't uh, been DC'd, my computer hasn't shut down. So far, so good. Looks like I'm definitely not gonna be getting rank two. Probably not even three, but maybe rank four, we'll see. And we are about to get another smithing level. This is going to be level 95. And you can see I've been sitting at my computer for over five and a half hours now. Still haven't pooped myself. Feels good. Now I want to show you how this method goes for UIM. Because I'm just smelting bars and not smithing anything, there's a lot less downtime, and this method's pretty much constant running back and forth. And because I have the noted gold ores, that means the world hopping method isn't so effective in this case. The other method is if you don't have noted gold ore, then you buy a couple inventories of gold on a non-blast furnace world, put it on the conveyor belt, and then hop to a blast furnace world to get the bars. It's actually a really good method, and I've heard it's actually about the same XP as what I'm getting now with a noted gold ore, except it's way more expensive because you have to buy the gold. But yeah, either way, you can see this is a very click intensive method since I have to drop each and every gold bar, which means in total I'll be dropping, I think it was like 28,000 gold bars throughout this process. Oh yeah, right here, you can see when I want to drink the stamina, I drop all the gold bars in my inventory except for one. I unnote the gold ore, drop the gold bar, unnote the stamina, and then drink it while I'm running to the conveyor belt. And any second now, we are about to get logged out. There it is. And for the UIM six hour smithing record, it looks like that we have achieved rank four. Yeah, dude, I had no shot of getting rank one no matter how much ore I had. Six hour records are such an arbitrary thing that doesn't even matter to most people. But for me personally, I find it fun, especially because like with the UIM high scores, I know like half the people on this list are actually like more than half of them. So it's just kind of fun for me competing with them. But yeah, you can look at the XP tracker here. It's almost 1.3 million smithing XP in six hours, averaging a little bit over 200 KX XP per hour. And then if we log back in, uh, we still have 5.3k more ore. So that's like another hour and a half or something is smithing. So we got a little bit left to go. Something I just wanted to mention is that I know it looks like I'm littering all over the place, but it's fine. It doesn't bother other people because there's this update. Uh, it's been like over two years now. Uh, when you drop items in the blast furnace, they only appear to the person who dropped them. Apparently a lot of people were complaining about UIMs dropping gold bars on the ground. I think it was specifically because of UIMs they made that update because a lot of people were getting annoyed because so many UIMs were doing this. Not an issue anymore though. But if you are trying to drop trade items though, don't do it at the blast furnace. Do you see this? Once I unnote this, no more gold ore. That is the end. So just from the gold ore, like I said before, is almost 1.6 million smithing XP. Still average over 200k XP per hour. Uh, and then as for the GP, I originally put two mil GP exactly into the coffer here. And I'll take that back out now. And what we had left was 1.45 mil. So he's about 550k, which means it was just over seven and a half hours of smelting gold ore. And then to use up all the Addy ore from earlier, I think that came out to another like five or six hours or something. With all the gold ore used up, that is another spot free in the looting bag. Uh, you can see I actually went to AFK woodcut a little bit earlier. 
also grab the con cape out. But now we only have one ore left to use, and that is gonna be the runite bars. Dude, I feel like I've done this exact same teleport so many times in the last 24 hours to get to the blast furnace, but this should be the final time that we have to go there. We have 450 rune ores to use up, which shouldn't take too long. I'm thinking maybe a couple hours at most. I was thinking of what to make out of these 450 runite bars. I decided I'm not going to make them into darts because that would last me for like maybe two slayer tasks and give me like 1% extra DPS over Addy darts. And that would take up an extra back slot while I'm trying to do mole because I probably won't be using the blowpipe for a while, like not until we go back to slayer. So I forgot a hammer, but luckily we can grab a hammer from right over here. I have to do a bit of juggling though. Um, but I was looking at the wiki over here for the rune items for like what's the best item to alk and it would be the rune swords. That would be 12,480 GP per bar because it requires one bar. Technically the best thing to make would be the 2H plate legs or plate skirt. That gets the most bang for your bar in terms of alk price but I don't have level 99. So for me it would be best to make the rune swords but instead I think I'm going to come down over here and make them into square shields. It requires two bars and you get 23k which means I will be missing out on about 1k GP per bar so I will be down like 450k otherwise. But I don't feel like standing around the blast for us for so long just alking rune swords so this way it'll be faster to smith them and I won't spend so much time alking. Unfortunately as a UIM it's just not really convenient to upkeep rune ore slash bars slash darts especially when all you do really is boss layer which is really my goal and what I like doing the most. Yo so we got a game update today and I want to quickly go over this. This update is pretty much my childhood dream. They've added games room tables to five new spots around the game. As a kid when I was in like middle school and high school I spent so much time time at the games room and I had always wished that they would like revitalize it in some way or another and at the very least they made it a lot more convenient to play games with other people. I guess a lot of people wouldn't want to go out of the way to go to the games room because it was so isolated it wasn't very convenient even though there was a teleport to get straight there. It would be very unlikely you would randomly stumble into the games room but now when you're doing a bunch of random content or just wandering around with your friends it's a lot more easy to stumble into games especially because they have it at the GE now too. I just went back to my old videos and I found this one right here, Jagex destroying the games room from July 7th, 2017. Apparently I really liked this video too, I guess I was really passionate about it, but I remember uh, the update they did for this video was that they removed this notice board that was in the games room that said there was plans to expand the games room, like adding chests and some other games to it, and I was so devastated at the time because I spent so much time there, and they were pretty much confirming they had no more plans to update anything in there. And then here's another video I posted May 31st, 2017, again, I guess I was really passionate about the games room I really liked this video and this was just going over the games room just showing people what it was because it was dead content like a lot of people even to this day don't even know about the games room or the ranking system there but my god they did it they finally updated the games room well kind of the games room they, they expanded the games room so to speak and apparently the collection log was showing a higher total than it should have been so I guess I'm probably gonna have a little bit less now when I go to check it again guides for us all once again is crying and shaking and there's all the rune or used up. Uh, so the total profit that we got from that is about 5.1, 5.2 mil-ish GP. It looks like the total smithing XP we gained throughout this grind was pretty much exactly 2 million XP. That looks really, really nice. I messed up the switches with the ice gloves and the gold smithing gauntlets a couple times, but I'm glad in the end it worked out to be 2 million XP and not like 1.999 mil or something. I also wanted to brag that the whole time I was smithing, not once did I accidentally unnote a full inventory of stamina potions. In total though, all the smithing I did took about 50 15 or 16 hours to use up all the ores. Oh, speaking of using up the ores, now that the runite ore is gone, that is another spot freed up in the bag. Okay, I'm just gonna get the looting bag back and then redo his spory and then we'll end the video naked. And as for the smithing rank, it looks like we started at about rank 200 and now we're rank 170. That's gonna do it for this video though. After two and a half months of doing raids, we used up all the ores that we got. Next up is gonna be using up the planks by doing mahogany homes. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day, and I will see you again next time.